the first sense is, is a memory of his cheerfulness and this infectious optimism, this infectious confidence that left almost anybody who came into touch with him, those who are meeting him for the first time, those who knew him well, feeling better after any encounter. And part of it was this charisma, this charm, but it was also very much a sort of can-do attitude that left one with a sense of whatever issue one had come to discuss with him, that this can be managed, we will succeed. Now, who was Sergio? Sergio Vieira de Mello was his name. Um, in addition to being Brazilian, he was described to me before I met him in 1994 as someone who was a cross between James Bond on the one hand and Bobby Kennedy on the other. And in the UN, <laughs> you don't get that many people who actually managed to merge those qualities. He was James Bond-like in that he was ingenious. He was drawn to the flames. Uh, he chased the flames. He was like a moth to the flame, something of an adrenaline junkie. Uh, he would, was successful with women. Uh, <laughs> He was Bobby Kennedy-like, because in some ways, one could never tell if he was a realist masquerading as an idealist, or an idealist masquerading as a realist, as people always wondered about Bobby Kennedy and John Kennedy in that way. What he was was a decathlete of nation building, of problem solving, of troubleshooting in the world's worst places and in the world's most broken places. Sergio really did recognize the human dignity in everyone and paid respect to the human dignity in, in everyone. Even the worst human rights offender, he would treat with incredible civility and pay respect to that person's individual dignity. And that William Shawcross used to joke that Sergio's autobiography would be called War Criminals, My Friends, because he inevitably approached war criminals. And I saw that on many occasions as if they were friends. And paying dignity to the human in all allowed him to win concessions that people who would have had a more confrontational or more judgmental approach never would have managed. Sergio was in Beirut when the US Embassy was hit by the first ever suicide attack against the United States. From Lebanon, he went to Bosnia in the, in the 90s. The issues were, of course, uh, ethnic sectarian violence. Um, he was the first person to negotiate with the Khmer Rouge talk about evil prevailing. I mean, here he's in the room uh, with the embodiment of evil in Cambodia. He negotiates with the Serbs. He actually crosses so far into this realm of talking to evil and trying to convince evil that it doesn't need to prevail, um, that he earns a nickname, not Sergio, but Serbio, uh, while he's living in the Balkans and, and conducting these kinds of negotiations. He then goes to Rwanda and to Congo in the aftermath of the genocide, and he's the guy who has to decide huh, okay, the genocide is over, 800,000 people have been killed. The people responsible are fleeing into neighboring countries, into Congo, into Tanzania. I'm a humanitarian, I'm Sergio, I'm a humanitarian, I wanna feed those, I don't wanna feed the, feed the killers, but I wanna feed the two million people who are with them. So we're gonna go, we're gonna set up camps and we're gonna, we're gonna supply humanitarian aid, but uh-oh, the killers are within the camps. Well, I'd like to separate the sheep from the wolves, let me go door to door to the international community and see if anybody will give me police or troops to do the separation. And the response, of course, was no more than we wanted to stop the genocide and put our troops in harm's way to do that, nor, nor do we now want to actually get in the way and pluck genocidaire from camps. So then you have to make the decision, do you turn off the international spigot of life support and risk two million civilian lives? Um, or do you continue feeding the civilians knowing that the genocidaire are in the camps, literally sharpening, sharpening their knives for future battle? What do you do? It's all lesser evil terrain in these broken places. What, one thing Sergio always did was he made the, the, sure that there was at least one or two people close to him on whom he could rely for constant, candid, and very outspoken disagreement with just about everything he did. He had you know, none of the insecurities um, of of some senior leaders. He liked to be questioned. He liked to have his assumptions treated with skepticism. He liked to be accused that he was perhaps being too pragmatic in some cases. He liked to hear the counter arguments. And sometimes he would change, often he wouldn't. But he wanted to know that and he really appreciated that. 
he did not surround himself by any means, at least in his immediate circle, with yes people. Quite to the contrary, he sought out people who really were likely to, to contradict him. But I want to close with the, what I take to be the four lessons from Sergio's life. What, what, what do we take away? The first, I think, is um, his relationship to, in fact, evil is something to learn from. Be in the room. Don't be afraid of talking to your adversaries, but don't bracket uh, what happened before you entered the room. Don't black box history. Uh, don't check your principles at the door. Second takeaway from Sergio's life briefly, um, what I take away, and this in some ways is the most important, it, he uh, espoused and exhibited a reverence for dignity that was really, really unusual. Third point, uh, very briefly, he talked a lot about freedom from fear. In times of fear, one of the things Sergio used to say is fear is a bad advisor. Fourth and final point, he somehow, because he was working in all these, the world's worst places, all lesser evils, had a humility, of course, and an awareness of the complexity of the world around him. I mean, such an acute awareness of how hard it was, how Sisyphean this task was of mending, and yet aware of that complexity, humbled by it, uh, he wasn't paralyzed by it. I mean, I would completely endorse what, what Samantha wrote. He saw the UN very much in the service of we the peoples and very much in the service of, of we the peoples who lacked peace and security, who lacked access to development, whose human rights were not uh, respected. So going back to we the peoples and asking them, how do you see us reviving the international mechanisms? to better meet global challenges, I think would have been very much uh, part of his vision and he would have seen the sense in it completely and he would have been pained, I think, about the deficit of international cooperation at the moment and the loss of sense of common purpose. But sadly, um, you know, we'll, we'll never know exactly what um, sort of Secretary General, Secretary Ger uh, that, that, that Sergio would have made, but um, he's, he still inspires uh, many um, in in the UN, uh, and and I, I I believe you know he was also a friend and a model for this Secretary General.